So we start the next slot of our program. This time, the first speaker is Vitaly Shumeiko from Chalmers University of Technology from Sweden, Wallenberg Center for Quantum Technology at Chalmers, Chalmers. Okay, so please, and uh, can you a little bit introduce yourself? Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah, so, uh, so can, can I start? Yeah. Okay, so it's uh, my great pleasure to take part in this uh, workshop and, and to uh, tell about um, Wallenberg Center of Quantum Technology and research which is going on there. So uh, this center was uh, launched uh, in 2018 by initiative of Wallenberg Foundation and um, the same foundation uh, finances this project and it's supposed to continue for 10 years. So this is the uh, copy of homepage and this is address here so that you could uh, visit this homepage and uh, find out all about this center and its activity. Now, my, my aim now is to just briefly review uh, research part at Chalmers. So uh, the major goal of this project uh, was to, and it is uh, to build a large quantum processor uh, built on a, on a basis of superconducting quantum technological platform. So big means that up to say 100 working qubits. And there is also, and this, this activity is um, centered at Chalmers. Now there is par several parallel excellent program, programs. Um, some of them are also uh, placed at Chalmers and these uh, programs on quantum computation and quantum simulation. In other programs on quantum commutation, uh, communication is um, placed at um, Royal uh, Technical University in Stockholm and uh, on quantum sensing in Lund University. So uh, in, in this map, I show this uh, geography of, of, of this collaboration. So uh, Chalmers is um, situated in the city of Gothenburg at the west coast of Sweden. Stockholm is at the Baltic coast and uh, Lund University is in the south of Sweden. So Chalmers uh, here is supposed to uh, coordinate the whole project. And uh, I, I, I have to uh, tell here that uh, Chalmers strongly supports um, Ukrainian and uh, research in Ukrainian now after after break of, the, of, of this war. So Chalmers uh, University issued some grants for Ukrainian scientists. And by the way, uh, all uh, grant agencies in Sweden also have these similar programs. And Wallenberg Foundation created two one year positions within Centrum to uh, specifically for uh, Ukrainian scientists. So, and this is, uh, this is the uh, latest picture of participants. We have uh, today approximately uh, more, more than 100, approximately 120 people working at the center in these three universities. Majority of them are PhD students and postdocs, but there are uh, many, many faculty members. This, this was first workshop, um, real life workshop after, after COVID break. Uh, it, it was conducted at Chalmers uh, in, in May this year. So uh, research at Chalmers. Um, now this uh, quantum computing activity um, is aimed to use uh, superconducting circuits. The core project, multi-qubit quantum processor uh, on, the, on this platform means that uh, toward the end of this project, uh, we have to build processor like let's say 100 or something qubits working, but also a kind of symmetric uh, problem is to um, find out what kind of uh, useful application could be run by this computer. 
Now, ex now, excellence programs, which are also run in uh, at Chalmers, is an alternative way to do quantum computation with continuous variables. Then a project of quantum simulation. Then a very interesting task to build interface uh, between uh, superconducting qubits uh, on long distance. And finally, quantum acoustics. I, and I will tell uh, some information about all these uh, kind of projects here. So what, uh, what is the problem with a multi-qubit quantum processor? Uh, today, people, many groups are working with the uh, uh, elementary blocks of such computers, which are which are two qubit gates. Now the problem is that to scale up this kind of um, building block to multi qubit really machine, uh, one uh, the, the major important task is to make these building blocks as perfect as possible, and uh, in particular uh, they have to uh, show um, two qubit gate fidelity larger than two nines. Uh, desirably three nines. And then uh, another quite challenging problem is to design a architecture for large network of superconducting qubits with all these rounding um, um, microwave uh, components like uh, various control lines, uh, readout devices, amplifiers, and so on in a, in a one integrated block. But also, uh, it's now clear that this block should be integrated with the classical computer that uh, run this machine uh, con continuously uh, controls and uh, performs the readout and um, perhaps provide feedbacks and so on. So there are there are three major topics which are itself uh, uh, each of them are very difficult. Now, uh, if we look at uh, first uh, problem of kind of elementary blocks. So what uh, the, the, the latest um, achievement uh, at Chalmers is to make it in, a, in a, this configuration that I will discuss here. So I will, I will kind of refer to uh, articles which are placed on archive. Some of them articles are already published, some of them not, but I give references to archive so that uh, if you're interested, you can look at these papers itself. So elementary building block is a circuit diagram is uh, shown here. It's a two qubits. Today, it's a, a transmon type superconducting qubits based on Josephson junctions, which are coupled by tunable coupler. And this uh, tunable coupler uh, is controlled by external circuitry. Now, this is another diagram here, a more kind of practical, shows this two qubit component, uh, and this is a coupler in, in between. And it, at the sides, there are, there are readout resonators, and there are several lines which kind of are connected and control this, this block, which are not shown. Now, the uh, design for, 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 this, uh, for, for this particular, particular uh, device is shown here. Uh, we developed uh, integrated uh, two two chip uh, device where one chip contains qubit circuit itself, and another chip contains all circuitry uh, supplied circuitry, including including resonators. So, uh, and uh, he, here you see some uh, micrographs of this uh, of this device. Now, uh, what was demonstrated here? Is that um, the uh, the uh, average coherence time of 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 this device? Uh, it's about ninety microsecond. This is uh, kind of uh, among the world best uh, figures in this kind of uh, for 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 coherence time. Now, uh, because of because of uh, fast operation and. Uh, uh, large coherence time, it was possible to get this uh, fidelity for single qubit operation, which is uh, pretty fine. And uh, for two qubit operations, a little bit below benchmark of two nines. So uh, as we see here, in order to proceed, so major task now is to improve uh, fidelity of two qubit gate by making it, uh, it faster. So, so this, uh, task uh, is solved in another paper. Here, uh, it's a theoretical paper where um, a protocol is proposed 
to make a three qubit gate simultaneously by operating with uh, two separate two qubit gates. So here is the circuit which uh, is in mind. There are three qubits coupled to two tunable couplers. And uh, by, by manipulating with this, uh, with, with this circuit uh, and uh, kind of mm, uh, coupling different, uh, different levels here, there are totally six levels in this, in, in, in this device. It was possible to, to devise a gate which is um, capable to, uh, to uh, reproduce major uh, known three qubit gates in quantum information, like Toffoli gates, Fredkin gates, and so on. And, uh, in, and, and this can be done in one step. So you apply a set of pulses uh, and during time, which is typically time of single two qubit gates, you have something which can be decomposed, for example, like this. It's if you would like to, uh, to, uh, to, to do the same gate as, uh, as here by using just two qubit couplings, you have to uh, go through this sequence. So you see that it's enormous kind of um, uh, we uh, win in a, in a, in a running time. So, so, so this is, um, uh, this is very uh, kind of promising. Now, this idea was implemented experimentally. The first experiment was done also. Uh, and here, um, our, our, our people demonstrated uh, in, in experiment, this gate fidelity with this number, it's almost perfect. Yeah, and uh, here you see uh, optical micrograph of the device. It's a part of network which, which activates in this particular experiment. So here are three qubits, uh, two couplers and uh, surrounding electronics. Uh, and here, uh, so what they what they managed to demonstrate, they uh, uh, by by using this gate, they uh, demonstrated um, a generation of three qubit uh, entangled states, GHZ and uh, and W. Uh, so so here here is uh, one of one of uh, kind of results showing how population of different levels in, in the system um, uh, changes in time. So, so, so this is uh, this uh, idea seems works. Now, uh, an, a, another important ingredient of, of large uh, multi-qubit processor is amplifier. This uh, this is quite quite important uh, part of, of uh, the whole toolbox, because uh, because because it's absolutely essential for a qubit readout. Um, uh, qubits, uh, the state, uh, the state of the qubits are, are measured with a very weak electromagnetic signals, in average less than ten photons. So that, uh, in in order to uh, measure the signals, we 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 need amplification, and this amplifier has to satisfy a number of uh, region requirement. One of them is that it must be large gain, more than twenty dB. Second, is uh, the large uh, amplification bandwidth, because, because we cannot use uh, one narrow band amplifier for every qubit, but uh, in order to uh, multiplex the whole system, uh, it, it's, it's nice to have one amplifier for many qubits. And final requirement is a very low edit noise near quantum limit, uh, because we're working with the so weak signals. So it's a challenge to, to, to build this amplifier and uh, several groups in the world during last four or five years developed such a, such a device. So it's called traveling wave parametric amplifier. So in our case, uh, this amplifier is built as a chain of um, blocks of Joseon junctions. So, uh, so each, each kind of, um, Supercell in this kind of uh, chain consists of three sub blocks, and each sub block uh, ha has a form of a kind of squid type um, device. Uh, and, and this is necessary to provide three way mixing regime for this, for this amplification. And this is, this is um, a picture of this, of this device. So uh, in, 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 in this device, only 404 units are used, and it's compared to more than 1,000 in other 
kind of groups uh, using and uh, the, the same uh, 20 dB is achieved here. So the whole length of this device is about two centimeter. Now uh, on these graphs, uh, what I show are experimental uh, data for uh, amplification gain as a function of frequency for, uh, for, for different pump frequencies. So you see that it's a pretty wide band, more than one gigahertz of amplification where you have 20 dB and added noise for this device is smaller than one photon. So all requirements are uh, kind of fulfilled and this is a promising development in this, in this uh, topic. Okay, now, uh, now uh, th th this is all about this major project uh, with the large um, uh, superconducting processor. Now alternative uh, way of doing uh, quantum, quantum computation. So as uh, Hiroshi and Raimond called that in, in their book, it's a, a change from spins to strings, meaning that uh, we uh, can encode com computational states, not in a states of uh, discrete qubit, but in electromagnetic mode, in strings. In our case, it's uh, just microwave modes confined in a, a superconducting resonators. So idea is that if you, uh, so you cannot, as we know from uh, linear optics, you cannot build quantum computer just with photons. You need some nonlinear element to kind of manipulate with them. In our case, uh, we manipulate with the superconducting qubits, but uh, we use superconducting qubits to control electromagnetic field, but not use electromagnetic field to control qubits like in ordinary approach. And this is advantages because um, uh, photons in cavities have a very long lifetime compared to qubit today. It's uh, it's two orders of at least two orders of magnitude longer. And also uh, it turns out that with photons, it's uh, easier to do uh, error correction. So this approach was uh, kind of put forward by uh, team in Yale University. And what we have at Chalmers is this. Uh, so we have uh, we have a, a 3D cavity made with aluminum uh, with a high uh, with a high quality factor, and uh, this uh, cavity uh, there, there is a chip with the superconducting qubits with transmon and readout resonator which is placed somewhere in this uh, inside this cavity, and then by, by and then there are several protocols which. Uh, uh, which allows by, by, by manipulating this qubit to generate various uh, non-trivial, non-classical states in a, in a cavity which can be used for uh, quantum uh, co computation. So in this particular work, the first step is made uh, and uh, it was demonstrated that it was possible to generate a large amount of non-trivial quantum states starting from Fox states with two photons and then a binomial states. And these are cat states. And these are so-called GKP states, which are kind of used for, for quantum error correction. And a uh, novelty here is that uh, the, uh, in this experiment, uh, the cubic phase state was demonstrated. Now, uh, I would like to uh, tell a few more words about this. Um, it was also a theoretical paper from our center uh, about, about uh, this specific topic. So the, the, it's well known that uh, with the continuous variables, there is a universal set of gates uh, similar to ordinary qubits, which allows to perform any quantum computation. There are, you, there are of course, several uh, possibilities for these universal sets, but uh, one of them it's, uh, consists of five unitary operations. Now you see that these first four, this, 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 and this, they uh, are associated with quadratic Hamiltonian. So they generate Gaussian states. And this is, uh, this is equivalent to linear optics. So this is not enough. So it must be at least one non-trivial, non-Gaussian non gate. And this gate is, called, is, is here. It's a, it's a cubic phase gate. Uh, and in this, uh, in this work, uh, the way was uh, proposed how to generate uh, this, this gate. Uh, and uh, the pro uh, pro proposal uh, 
uh, suggest to use a uh, superconducting resonator, which is controlled by this kind of squid-like uh, device, which is called snail. Uh, and, uh, and by a certain protocol, you should be able to, to create a cubic phase state by, uh, by, by using this gate. So this is Wigner function for, uh, as I showed before, this is theoretical model, and this is what we see in, in experiment. So, so this, this is kind of first step towards um, um, proceeding with a full-scale quantum computation with these photonic states. Now, another, another interesting idea, which was explored uh, also experimentally here, it, it's, and it uh, can be used for quantum simulation for various uh, condensed matter models, is uh, the strong coupling of uh, photo photons to, uh, to artificial atoms. So here, um, there are two uh, resonators or uh, just, uh, yeah, resonator coupled to outside world, uh, which uh, have strong coupling at edges of these resonators with uh, superconducting qubits was placed here. So, so this uh, this um, uh, and uh, and this uh, resonator, it's a it's a made uh, it, it's it's made of um, meta material which uh, which uh, is a periodic set of of another resonator. So that basically. Uh, we are dealing with a um, photonic crystal at both sides and edge states in, in these photonic crystals, which uh, exist in the gaps, in, in photonic gaps in, in this crystal, they are coupled to uh, superconducting qubits. So this is, uh, this again, a micrograph of how this is implemented in experiments. So here is chain of uh, small resonators at this at left side, at the right side, these are qubits which are coupled to edge states, and, and these are without- uh, Vitaly, sorry, we uh, use already time for questions, so three minutes till- uh, Sorry, minutes. so I'm, I'm about to finish. So, uh, so, um, so, so uh, the, uh, yeah, probably I can uh, ju just say a few words about this. So, so this is another direction, which, uh, which is related to quantum acoustics. So uh, in, in this experiment, um, uh, acoustic quantum acoustic cavity was uh, implemented. And it was shown that it's possible by, uh, by uh, parametrically pumping this cavity to produce multiple entangled states of, uh, of phon phonons which uh, exist in this cavity. So squeezing is shown here. And I, 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 I don't show here, but, uh, but there is also uh, multiple entanglement was realized, and this kind of uh, uh, this uh, system could be used for um, generating multiple entangled states for one-way quantum simulation. Well, so I, I probably finish at this point. Okay, uh, then thank you for the interesting talk, and uh, we have maximum two minutes for question, please, Andrei. Semenov, very shortly. Yeah, I will be very good. Uh, thank you for your talk, very interesting. Could you please um, mention uh, in a bit more details about uh, reconstruction of Wigner function? Do you measure field quadrature like in optics with homodyne detection? Yes, 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 exactly. exactly. Uh, yeah. please show what means homodyne detector here? <laughs> Just... Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we are using homodyne detector. No, we are using homodyne detectors, and uh, this is a uh, very, very difficult part of work to, to do this uh, uh, reconstruction of Wigner function, yes. But uh, this is homodyne detector, yeah, but, uh, even with uh, all this uh, circuit, with your circuit. And another, my question, why this is not p-function? Why don't you consider more general uh, treatment of non-classicality? Because this is related not negativity of Wigner function, but to... Uh, absence of positive definiteness for p functions it's yeah, not that. I, I, you, you know uh, it's it's a kind of mainstream people in uh, there there is protocol of 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 reconstructing wigner function so mm -hmm. so it's my, maybe the easiest way to to do it um, okay. just yeah. to mention you because just a few 
uh, days ago with my colleagues from Institute of Physics, we discussed procedure how to with such things uh, confirm uh, that uh, P function is negative and uh, only by using uh, photo detection, so without gamma dining. Yeah, but look, we, we don't have photo detection. We use linear amplifiers. Yeah, right? linear amplifier. This, this, uh, this is what I mean for the detection in yeah. the general form. Yeah. So uh, the more simple kind of measurements, maybe. Yeah, okay. So, so if this is published, you after that. Yeah. If, 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 if this is published, please, please give me reference. We we'll 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 discuss it only. Yes, no. Yeah. Okay, okay. So now is the, uh, other questions. Okay, then uh, uh, in the chat, uh, we have what was the key to high gain? 20 decibels of the traveling wave parameter amplifier. Yeah, this is a short chain. Yeah, this is the tricky question. Uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, uh, with the, uh, it, it turns out uh, th this is, uh, this was discovered uh, pretty, pretty recently, a couple of years ago, that the major problem uh, with, you know, theoretically, three way mixing. Could provide huge gain, like with this type of, uh, with this length of the uh, tupa. Uh, it's 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 uh, theoretically you can get after uh, uh, up to 50 dB. Now problem, it turns out that problem with three-way mixing is that uh, generation of high harmonics uh, reduces dramatically reduces the effect. So the uh, the the trick here to to get to get a high gain is to fight with the, with the high harmonic generation. So you have to do dispersion engineering, clever dispersion engineering, and various people, uh, various group groups are kind of working in that direction now. It's more or less now understood. Okay, thank you. And Shapovalov, uh, uh, very shortly question. Very shortly. Okay, okay uh, I have small questions. What is the real, the coherence time for two or three qubit circuits. Uh, now, uh, the, the coherence time, as far as I understand, is measured for individual qubits. And uh, in this uh, uh, record here is above 100 microsecond, the best qubit. Now, in average, yeah. mm -hmm. they have about 90. Mm, thank you. Okay, thank you again for the talk. And we are going.